Hi, it's Neil Sean here on your entertainment news. I've not got one star, I've got five stars today as I welcome a super talented guest, the one and only Miss Denise Pearson. Remember though, Denise? If you miss it, you miss out. So Miss Denise today on your entertainment news. So, Denise, lovely to see you again as ever. <laughs> now, you've just come from this splendid uh, show you did last week in London, yes. in Islington. Yes. What was the vibe like for you? Because, you know, mm. just tell me about how it all got put together and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, uh, first and foremost, I had SJM on board, got them on board. Um, this was the day before my birthday. Oh, wow. Sure. Um, actually, a day after my birthday, it happened. So it was a birthday present to myself, and I accomplished getting SJM on board. And uh, we put the show together. Uh, we sang songs, sweetie, that we hadn't sang since 87. And we wore sequins that like we hadn't do. worn. <laughs> yes, since 87. Lovely. And so the fans travelled from the Canary Islands, from Paris, from... Um, from Ireland just to see this show uh, because uh, they hadn't seen it since um, 87 yeah. <laughs> and it was an amazing amazing night everybody was singing along they were hearing songs that we haven't sang um, uh, live uh, from back then and it, it was phenomenal really ph phenomenal are you surprised because you know I mean you say fans of me I listen to you all the time so you're always in my head you know <laughs> wake up to me if I say yes but the thing is <laughs> but when you I suppose it's different as you say when you're performing them and yeah. then really seeing in the eyes of these people how yes. much it means to them yes you know because you, you think you know what you've had in success was but when yes. you watch these people you think they really do like this yes you know? it's so wonderful to see the people who put us where we um, to the, the heights of fame that we yeah. were at, yeah. you know, and sing along, and we've all grown older together, and we're still like we're st in, th in the eighties because you know uh, a lot of the tunes were the theme tune to their lives, yeah, and it means that put it's put them back into a certain place in a certain time that they were, you know. They As were I was saying, you know, when you go to see you at a concert like that, yeah. you are whatever age you are again with no responsibilities. Yes, you you could be maybe going to school in the morning, you know, yes. you might have just started your first job, all that sort of stuff, yeah. and you think, oh, why can't I go back? But that's the nicety of nostalgia, isn't it? It is, it you is. Know? It's wonderful to have something like a perfume. A perfume yeah. um, brings you back, and, and the music, music is love. It's 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 a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, a beautiful yeah. Thing. And, you know, you've got this album, the anthology. Yes. Tell me about that. How does that get put together? Because, you mean... That, did you listen to some of the stuff again for the first time? Oh, yes. I forgot we did that. <laughs> yes, yes. It's such a huge catalogue. Yeah. So really, from uh, 80 to 84 to 91, uh, they've put together um, on the anthology. And they've got all the remixes. They've got the B-sides. They have wow. um, anything that's ever been put out from that era of Five Star. And then we've got the part two coming with the tent um, catalogue also. Wow. Yeah. Oh, God. So when you... But when you Look at that, and you know, because we were saying just before we came on air how we, we speed through things, and of course. When you came to fame, it was there's was no social media, mm -hmm. so in a way, it, I always think our period was harder work in a lot of respects because mm -hmm. you had to do all of those TV shows. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if you're say Taylor Swift, you can do a big Skype thing, mm -hmm. and everybody sees you in one, you know, and then yes. they'll go buy the album, hopefully, you know. Yes. But if you didn't do Wogan, Crackerjack, yes. you know, everything that was going around, yes. and that was our only chance to see you. Mm -hmm. So if you mm -hmm. missed it, there was no what do they call that thing playback? Or whatever, catch up. That <laughs> yeah, was it, wasn't it? You know, it. you're like, I missed them. Yes, <laughs> yes, you had to have the, the um, what is it called, the video. Yeah, and not many could yes. afford that though. That's true. That's very so true. Really. So that those are benefits of um, social media. Yeah. I mean, you can uh, run your Skype and your Facebook and your whatever you need to send emails in in, in your bed. Yeah. You know, on a day off, which is great. It's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> do you understand? Um, and I don't mean this rudely, but do you understand the charts today? I don't anymore. <laughs> Um, I haven't really looked at it. You know, like, it's hard. Yes. I don't understand how when a single's released, yes. where it goes, yes. <laughs> if that makes sense. Do you know yes, what I mean? Yes, like, it does. It came out on a Monday. By Wednesday, you had a bit of a midweek, so you yes. kind of knew. Yeah. And by Thursday, you knew if you were going to be doing, or, you know, Top of the Pops or whatever. You know what I mean? You kind of yeah. got the plot. Yeah. Now I see these things, and I don't understand how does anybody know how they've sold a record? Mm -hmm. so, or I guess we, we kind of, we get the, the royalty statements. The artists, we, we do get our royalty statements. That's the only way that I understand mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah it's a different industry altogether yeah. 
It really is. That's why you really do need a manager. <laughs> Tell you what's really going on. <laughs> and if you were starting out today, or if somebody came to you starting out today, yeah. given the success you've had, what would your number one piece of advice be? Because you were so young yourselves. Mm -hmm. You were lucky though because you had your dad on board. Yes. And I think that is imperative when you're all so young, you know, because you're not exploited. It's just your dad. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. But when you see these young kids like the Miley's and stuff, you think, mm -hmm. ooh, you know, mm -hmm. they're very young, but they seem a lot more savvy than, dare I say, yes. we were. Yes, <laughs> you know yes. What I mean? Yes. I would say the first piece of advice I would give is um, to always stay true to your, your talent that you have you know, because yeah. you are, you've, it's been given to you and you are an individual and, and nobody can do it like you. Nobody can do it like Michael. Mm -hmm. Nobody can sing my song, the five star songs, like I can sing the five star songs. Yeah. You know, so always stay true to you, otherwise you become um, like other people and then you're not so interested. Yeah, individuality. Individuality, yes. Yeah. I mean, talking about individuality, your dad, Buster, was very individual. Yes. He managed you brilliantly, I thought, you yes. know. But it was a rare thing to have, yes. you know, I mean, we, we, you mentioned Michael Jackson, of course, he was a famous, you know, his father was a famous manager. But it was quite rare to be managed by that. Did you find it strange when you were, say, at Top of the Pops and you saw bands who were free, free and more managed, as it were? Because mm -hmm. your dad was quite... You know, what's the word? He knew what he wanted, I suppose we'd say. You know yes, what I mean? Yes. So when you saw these other people, you think, well, that's quite freedom. You wouldn't mind a bit of that. Mm -hmm. Or did you not mind? Um, I don't think we saw other people. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's so um, fun about the festivals, festivals because we get to meet the artists now. Oh. Uh, I mean, when we went to Top of the Pops, it was we were in at 8 o'clock and we were finished by um, uh, 6, 7 in the evening. So we used to just run around our dressing rooms and switch the lights off and kind of like just have fun and eat bread pudding and, and the, the food that mummy sent for us. Yeah. It was fun days. Uh, but, but what dad did was absolutely incredible. Yeah. You know, he worked on the Midnight Hour, Wilson Pickett Midnight Hour tour, and worked with so many, uh, Desmond Decker, so many um, great people in the business. And he took all of his knowledge and then we had a plan. We had a, a base to start from. From him being around, he you couldn't have a better hour. from those names. And could your not. dad worked. Was, we know those names now, don't we? So, yes, yes. And w w did you? I mean, you obviously learned yourself a lot from him. Mm -hmm, and absolutely. Do you sort of recall that now and think? Yes, we. Dad would have done the. You know, <laughs> yes, that's true. That's what I do because he set a standard. Yeah. You know, with the costumes, with the way that with the rehearsals, with the oh, the way that he picked the musicians to to play on our records. We had Phil and Gaines, uh, Greg Phil and Gaines on our records. We had um, uh, Paul Jackson, guitarist. They were flown in from America. The, the, most of the producers were flown in from America to give us that flavour because of my dad's knowledge in the business. You know, and he invested a lot of time and energy and he was very savvy yeah. into our career. That's why everything was at a certain standard and it had, you can, you can tell it, was, it, it wasn't just starting out, it had some history behind it already, even when it was on its you first years. You should have a documentary, shouldn't it? You know, cause oh, absolutely. I'd be fascinated to know, you know, how he did it. I mean, because yes. as you say, he's working with these artists probably at the cutting edge of pop music, if you like, when they're starting out Motown and all that sort of stuff, you know. Yes. And that was kind of an experiment because nobody had done it. Yes, yes, we were um, at Tent Records, actually. We, we licensed the songs that we were doing through Tent, through the, the record company. It's never been done before. And very Tent clever. was a, very clever. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, there was an article on it that um, uh, it was one of the, the biggest and best things that were, had ever been done, that had been started. Wow. Uh, so he did very, very very well. You've got, yeah, that's what so I mean. You only, so when you get older, you realise you've got to thank them for these things because yes. at the time you're busy performing and doing your makeup. Yes, <laughs> you yes. Know what I mean? like, yes, we do, we, we do miss him though. Um, uh, it's, it's been nearly five, uh, six years mm. and since he passed, but he's still here in spirit. But he's got a legacy. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That's what we all want in life, is somebody to look back and go, wow, that person brought us this. Absolutely. And that's what it's about, isn't it? You know what Absolutely, I mean? Neil. Um, I thank him every day, because I do know his spirit is about. I, I have dreams also. Uh, the other the day, I, I had a dream of him. He was sitting on the bed in his jean shirt, and he was looking through the cassette tapes. And I thought, and I said, Mom, I had a dream of Daddy. He was sitting on the bed in his jean shirt, and he was young, and he was looking through a cassette tape. She said, Lydia, that's a good dream, because he's there, he's helping you. 
in his spirit. He's helping you. And I do believe that. We've always been very, very spiritual. I love the fact you just said, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I brought one in here a while ago. Nobody had seen one. You know what I mean? Oh, you know, wonderful. Uh, well, you guys in there? No, we haven't got one. <laughs> and, you know, just move away. You know. But it was great in that period as well to buy those formats, wasn't it? Do you remember the 7-inch single, the 12-inch remix, the cassette? Yes. The cassette sounds uh, instrumental. So you had to buy everything, didn't you? Yes, because you did. You, you did. were like, I need this. <laughs> yes. And it was very clever, you know, like poster in a bag. Do you remember that? <laughs> It was a big money-making machine. Yeah. And back in those days, um, songs, music sold. Yes. You had to sell in the millions. We yeah. were quadruple platinum. Yeah. Platinum. And um, we sold millions. But nowadays, you don't really have to sell, sell that much to become um, number one. Yeah. You know? Uh, but, but there's a lot of talent out there. Um, it is a great industry. We need to be very careful that we do... Um, have we do we make sure that we do influence the young ones um in bringing out their talent and, and not make them too lazy with the auto tunes and we can do this and we can do that and we can airbrush you and we can it's not all about that it is music is a thing it's 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 soul yes. it's from the soul and it's love so when you're singing from the soul and the love's coming out everybody's going to flock to it because that's what we all want is love no, I saw you also, I've got to touch on this, I saw you in um, uh, Thriller the Musical. Yes. Fabulous. I just thought <laughs> Thank you were fabulous. Thank but, you, um, But that, again, must have been a bit of a career highlight for you because you obviously love Michael Jackson, as we all yeah. did musically. I think it was genius. Oh, but then to be for singing his songs in front of yeah. such an adoring crowd who oh. come for you, but you're yes. singing his songs. Do you know what I mean? Yes, Doris and Lorraine were Michael Jackson fans. Oh. I was a Smokey Robinson fan. Oh, I love him. Yes. I wanted that wet perm look. Oh, <laughs> yes. Love him and his green eyes. Yeah. But then I'm the one who's singing the Michael Jackson song. So when I went over to the uh, the auditions, um, I couldn't believe it because I've, I've never really sat down and sang a Michael Jackson song. I've listened to it, yeah. but the, 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 the height of his key and the way that he moved, and I heard other people singing his songs, and I thought that that's not how you sing it. <laughs> and, and then I thought. It was just very, um, what is it called? It was um, tailored. What he did was tailored to his soul. Yes. And only Michael can sing his songs his way. Not unless you've got that, that those those few that can emulate him. It's a distinctive sound, though, isn't it? It's a, you know when, yes. you, when it's a bit like, and I'm not just saying this, but it's a bit like a five star song. When you hear the opening bars, you know. Yes. And it's same as Michael. Oh, I know that. Yes. And that's what makes an artist individual, I think, because it's like Silla, Dusty, you know, all of those. Yes. You hear that voice, you go, oh, Silla Black. Yes. And that's to me is clever. Yes. That's what it's about. Yes. Star absolutely. Power. Exactly. exactly. Um, yeah, I've got to mention this as well. We touched on we were talking about the shows that you went to. I'd forgotten you did the Royal Variety shows. Oh, now you're very young. Yes. How nerve wracking was that? And who who attended when you were there? Who was the royal? Um, uh, oh, the Queen. Wow. Uh, Princess Margaret. Uh, uh, I think Charles was there once. Gosh. Also, and we did Panto recently over in Windsor. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Edward came over. I was like, I was on the. I went backstage. I said, "Which which royal is that?" And they said, uh, "That's one of the Queen's sons, Edward." And I said, "That's not Edward." I was like, "That's not Edward." And they said, "Yes." I said, "He looks really great. He looks so great." And I didn't know he was so short. Well, really? So small. <laughs> You're selling him well, didn't you? Yeah, but, but when I went, in, I went back in because I, I finished um, uh, cooling down. I went back in. I said, "Hi, Edward. I, d I didn't know you look so great." And I was—I didn't know I was just saying, "Edward, you look so great," not Prince Edward. I was like, "I met." Your mom, and I met mean your brother, <laughs> and I met mean your aunt, and they're both writers. So, yeah, so you. So Prince Edward's there. What, yes. what was he like as a person? Because I know he he was theatrical. Do you remember nowadays he tried to join uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's company? Do you remember? And, and oh. he, I think he's always yes. had a passion for theatre. Yes, yes. So, they come every year at Royal Windsor. Uh, when we did uh, Sleeping Beauty, he came over with his family and Sophie. Is it Sophie? Yeah. Yeah, and this little girl. She's so she's so lovely. She had a nice voice. So thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> so sweet. And he's so lovely. And you're Very calling him handsome. Edward, but not him. I was. What are you supposed to call him then? Is it uh, Prince, so? Prince Edward, oh, I Prince guess. Um, normally, when royalty comes through, you're kind of lined up. And then he said, yeah, yes. And kind of curts curtsy. 
Oh, it's like family. Yeah. Because I've met the Queen and I've met uh, Margaret. Who was the Queen like when you stood in front of her, Denise? Because that must be kind of, I mean, thrilling for your family, but yes. you're the one standing there and you're thinking, oh, she's here, she's here, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, they, they, pre, they, they, tell, they tell us that when you see her, she comes up to you, you curtsy, uh, so we all curtsied and shook her hand, and she said, um, uh, oh, were you hot in those costumes? And we said, yes. <laughs> very nice performance, she said. She's just very polite, and, you know, we're all human beings. But it's, it's one thing I love about England is our monarchy. Yeah. I They're love lovely, it. Aren't they? Yes. It keeps us up here. It's like, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. I watch the uh, royal weddings and the street parties that we used to have, you know, yeah. growing up. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, because the recent royal wedding with Meghan, I mean, she is yeah. just stunning as a, you know, based strange, isn't it? Because she's like got that theatricality oh, of being right. an actress. And, right. Do you see what I mean? Right. So when they say, oh, she's mastered the royal wave, you think, I think she could have done that on her own. Yes, <laughs> of course. She's so beautiful. I watched an interview with her and she's, she's, she shines. Yeah. You know, and, and no wonder Harry, um, uh, got married to her she's just like Diana Diana's yeah. such a beautiful soul yeah. you know and Megan's such a beautiful soul and uh, the wedding was beautiful you know and he's happy you can see it when they both look at each other it's a different kind of dimension that they have and it's American and, and England yeah uh, is it American, funny as well because fantastic. in a way because it was so filmed you know and you could see yeah. his nerves couldn't you you know yeah. very sorry for him. but you yeah. feel like you're slightly intruded on a person yes. do you know what I mean you're yes. like I'm not sure I should see this you know yes. like she looked very as all women are always in charge I believe um, but she just looked very <laughs> poised as if, don't worry I've got this yes. you know what I mean yes. <laughs> and he was so nervous standing there and you think oh Oh, oh no, beautiful, know. beautiful. <laughs> Let me ask also, now, because I want you to come back and tell us all about this. Is it yeah. true you're writing a book now? You're putting a book yes. together? Yes. How, how how's that going and what have you got? It's to? wonderful. I'm on um, the second re read proof. Oh, it's called Pippi Pocket and the Kingdom of Delicious Delights. <laughs> and she's a princess. She's just like Meghan Mar Markle. All right, beautiful yes. tan skin. Yeah. She turns her, gives her crown a twist and she makes her magical uh, wishes and she makes things all better Oh. Yeah. Um, well, you see that as a kid's cartoon. It, yes. Do you know oh, what I mean? That's exactly what I see. The cartoon, um, the book, mm. and uh, merchandise in the stores. And it just came about when we came back to England, and I was living with Mummy and Daddy, um, and my two kids were all living together. And then my daughter drew a picture of this princess, and I thought it was so beautiful. And I was dating this guy at the time. His name was Patrick, and his mum called him Pippi. Oh. So, <laughs> you know what him now then? <laughs> Did that pull you off? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. And so, um, I thought, oh gosh, this is such a beautiful drawing. So that name, Pippi, was in my head, and I thought, I'm going to write some stories about sweets because I love the English sweets. Yeah, yeah. There was this place in America called Cambridge Cupboard. Oh, and yeah. it was in an English sweet shop. You could get all the Easter eggs because you don't get the hollowed out Easter eggs oh, in the States. Yeah. Um, so we always used to go to Cambridge Cupboard and get all our sweets. And I missed the licorice all sorts and the, the Kit Kats, the way they tasted it back here at home. Yes. And there so is a distinctive the, flavor, isn't there? There is, there mm -hmm. is. And cola bottles. And, yeah, oh and, yes, and pear drops. And so when I came back, it was like, Okay, in with the crisps, in with the hair <laughs> drops and everything. And I thought, I should, you know, it just all came together like chocolates um, and boulders and, and cream and yeah. cookies and make this into this, that and the other. And it was shh, and then it all makes everything. And what about, what's the writing process like for you? Is it, do you sit down every day or is it just, when you get an idea, just roll with it? A bit like, say, some writing, yes. keep going until you, I'll finish yes. this. <laughs> yes, yes, it's very important to... Every day, I think we're getting little messages about us because uh, with this book, um, I'm with Pe Pegasus Publishing. Oh, right. So it, the feeling was so strong this year um, to, to, to pursue it, to put it out, to send it to the publisher. So I found Pegasus on, online and I thought, should I um, submit the book? And something was just telling me, do it, Denise, do it, Denise. So I went over to Mummy's. I took the script to Mummy's, and I said, Mummy, can you um, 
uh, photocopy this so I can get a copy to send off to the publisher. She says, no, 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 you should uh, get your daughter Hassa to type it up and then do this and do that and do that. And I thought, I'm not going to see Hassa, <laughs> you know, um, until a month. So I, that was kind of like, it put it put it off. So I was watching this movie, sweetie, and on the back of the door it said Pegasus on the back of the door. So I thought, okay, that's a little sign. That I um, and it is, isn't go it? Because yes. I know what you mean, and, and you're thinking, no, no, good idea, mum, but that's a month. Yes. So you, you're thinking it has to be now. Somebody's telling me it's now. Yes, yes. So wow. that's what I did, and they accepted the book, and it was my first um, submission. So there you go. It's always very important to listen to those voices. Denise, can I just say thank you so much as ever for coming today. Will you come back and tell us more of about the book? Of course I will. I'm, I'm I can't so wait. nervous now. So when, is it, when do you think that will come out? Is it that, this year? This year. This and year. So for later, sure. And so in time for Christmas? Uh, for sure. For sure. I can't wait. A princess who can make things change the though. Yes. Fabulous. Sweet. <laughs> it's been lovely to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, sweetie. <laughs>